Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's one of those fantastic analog meters. BBC Gertz Metravat Unigore number 5. And look at that in the leather case and even that is okay. Yeah, of course we had this strap and it was strap was in use so we have a little bit of mark there but it even smells <laughs> real nice of leather it's in amazing state i can't wait to see if oh just like that if there's any batteries in this one or if they are leaked or anything I think that will be the original test. Uh, the original test leads. <laughs> yeah. So it was tested in 94 and next test 98. Okay, so they do this every four years. Interesting. This looks like Swedish. So it's from this one is probably from Sweden. Yeah, those are, this is, I think this is Swedish military. This, uh, this mark with the three crowns, if I'm not mistaken, that will be Swedish military. So that's a little bit interesting. And also the rear plate that consists of the, where well, you can find the technical specifications. Look at that. It looks like brand new. Simply because it was in the leather box. Amazing. Yeah, let's open and see if there's any batteries inside. I really hope. Ooh, that is lucky. Oh, really weird smell. And this is the seal. So nobody was in here. And that will be the original spare fuses. A little bit of battery leak, but not on the contacts. Ha <laughs> ha, lucky, lucky. Well, that's not easy. I've been browsing around the specification here and it says, don't forget to check if the battery is okay. And then you need to loosen the screw here to change the battery. And then I find here, battery voltage is 1.5 volts. Okay. But there's no single word about what type of battery cell I need. I mean, how difficult can it be? So what I did is I measured the length and the diameter of this cell. So the length is between 33 and a half, maybe 34 millimeters. And the diameter here, it cannot be any more than 21.5. And then I went to the internet and I looked all the battery charge for 1.5 volts, the length and the diameter. And I do not find any kind of standard cell that fits those measurements. So what the heck do I do now? That is annoying. And exactly what I expected. I'm trying like five volts. See, there's no response whatsoever because there's no battery in this unit. I'm trying to figure out what is going on here. So the ohm meter, of course, don't work at all. And I find a fuse down here and that is yeah, the same sort of size. And this one turns out to be okay, so I don't understand exactly what is the problem. 
and I think I'm doing this uh, right with the ohms. So I need to make a little short like this when I'm measuring really low ohms, but if I'm in kilo ohms, then I just measure between these two, right? Also, when I measured voltage, it's the same, the two to the left, okay? Voltage actually does work without the batteries in, if you use the correct connections. The high voltage, you need to use the two most, or, uh, like that. Okay, so I, let's try again what is going on here. I think I did figure it out. So of course I'm using the correct banana plugs. I am in kilo ohms times one. And then if I zero, see, now it works. And then you adjust to zero. See, that can be done real careful like that. See, this switch here is the overload protection switch and that one there is a mechanical problem see 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 it's not staying in but if i push it and hold it and slowly release it and then oh, look at that now there's a contact but if i just see just touch it a little bit like that then so that is, of course, the main problem with this uh, unit. So let's try and take a 1K resistor, and then it reads 1K. Haha! <laughs> so it's all a mechanical thing. Let's try and go into volts. 30 volts full range. Let's plug this into my DC power supply. 5 volts. And it reads, ah, see, here's a problem. This switch here needs to go this way. And now it's reading five. And we can, of course, uh, go to 10. So we are in a 30 volt range. That is 20 and it is a little bit low. 25 is, oh, it's reading 24. But well, that's probably possible to calibrate. I think this is not near yeah, exactly. See? Annoying. Let's try the high voltage range and then see. See, there's a tiny little readout on that one. So that seems to be okay. It was easy to remove the seal. Well, see, with the right tool, it just fits super duper easy. Oops. And we are in. It was a little bit frustrating because not only was it the four screws in the corner, but we also had to remove those two screws and the other screw in here inside the battery compartment so that was a little bit funny and i just got soaked with some nasty slimy goop i don't know if you can see it here yes it shines a little bit so all the way around the unit we got some nasty slimy chemical or whatever it is oh look at that what is that and where is it coming from so that is something i will have to investigate it is also look at that slimy slimy but it's not from the batteries and it could be because we had this this, this is of course falling apart It's a little bit funny. 
Look at that calibration. That's obviously current, right? Why would you measure current through circuit board tracks? I mean, this is copper, right? And copper is very dependent on temperature, so this can't be good. The transformer here is, of course, for all the different AC levels. It's doing all the ratios for AC voltage, current, and all that kind of stuff with AC. And here is the, the relay, the holding relay problem. And it even says Unicore 3 relays. So that means they're using the same relay in many different versions. And we have a problem with the, see, the magnet here is not so strong anymore. You just barely touch it and then it falls back. And this spring is very, very tough. But it's supposed to be tough because it hammers back to the release mechanism. See, but oh, it actually holds, but just barely. So that is how it is. But I will try and clean this and see what we can do for this one. All the current ranges. And that's of course done with big juicy resistors. Look at all that. And that down here is the high voltage um, entry. The red one is only used for the three kilovolt range. And that resistor is of course in here, carefully shielded and protected for maximum security. So you can even see this slimy goopy de goop. Oh no. I don't find any transistors or amplifiers or anything like that. So how is it generating an accurate test current for the ohmmeter. I just think it has something to do with the series resistor. You just turn it and then it is. It's just that, right? So this one is a non-active, non-amplified version. Not a single transistor to be found anywhere. Zero point five percent resistors, and all that is nice. Yeah, well, that's more or less what we can find inside this unit. I actually had the idea; it was not possible to fix this relay problem, but I really want to show you what I did because this is a problem for many of those Unigore meters. The, of course the magnet gets a little bit weaker and weaker over the years, right? And this one was just so, so critical. Just the slightest little, see, the slightest little movement and it released. That problem is completely solved. So what did I do? I left, left it like this, right? And then, see, you can just barely hold it. I mean, this one can just not do it, right? I've seen other meters where this part can actually hold itself. But before, when I started, it was much worse. And I just wanted to add a tiny, tiny little bit of hold this way. So what I did is I carefully took a screwdriver like this and then I did some little manures like this. Slowly and slowly and slowly affected it to this way and then carefully with my fingers here feeling if I got a tiny tiny little bit of more hold and I got I mean, this is zero point nothing. I just wanted to have just a tiny little bit so that when this spring here pushes towards it, it holds it, see? So it is 
maybe if I do, can I? No, see, I don't have this crazy. What if I do? See, before it was just anything that just made a tiny little vibration and it was released. <laughs> so I fixed it. I'm super happy about it. It was that easy. Now I can put back this nice Unigore back in its case and I cleaned everything. And I'm now waiting for the other part of the case to be dry after a lot of washing. So I think that is what I will show you today of this Unigore 5S from Sweden. So thank you very much for watching and please come back again real soon, all right?